Good afternoon. And thank you for coming to listen to me. <laughs> As you heard, I've been here so long ago, before even this university was established as it is now. It was the Mellon Institute. And I must tell you, it looks the same. <laughs> Most of it. The ceiling is the same. The elevators are the same. <laughs> the floor is the same. People have changed. And the entrance is not through the Fifth Avenue. But otherwise, I'm really happy to come back here. Since I, I left 50 years ago, more or less 50 years ago, I was here only once, invited to give a lecture. And uh, today, so uh, may I correct the statistics that was given earlier, 13 <coughs> PhDs today? I think it's 14, because I also got one. <laughs> And I must tell you that in my opinion, although the ceremonies here are longer than in many other places, it's very impressive. They are very impressive and people are very friendly. And I think it includes you as part of, of this establishment. So I don't really know what to tell you and what you want to hear. And maybe I'll start with a question that, uh, or a few questions that everybody asks me. Oh, not everybody, sorry. Many times I'm being asked. How come we went on for such a long time on a project that was considered impossible? Uh, the answer is, I was really curious I was curious since I was five years old, but on this particular point, which uh, this particular question, which I want to describe now in a few sentences, this was, my dream was to understand it. So let me say a few words. We all know that DNA has it, in it uh, instructions, which are called genes, that According to them, proteins are being produced. Proteins are the workers of every living cell, from bacteria, cockroaches, elephants, flowers, whatever. They are, they are performing most of the tasks that are needed for life. And they can, can function only when they're structure is made for the function, and this is determined by the sequence of the components that produce the proteins. These components are called amino acids. There are 20 types of them in the whole universe, and the, the order of these 20, 20 types of components is determining how the protein will look and what the protein can do. Proteins are usually made of 150 to 300 amino acids, these components, and the order of them that I just said is dictating what they can do as machines, as molecular machines, is dictated by the genes, the genes that are in the DNA. So the DNA language is made of only four letters. I'm still excited about it. I still, <laughs> I still am, huh? The whole, all our life are determined by four letters. Every combination of three of them is a, a used in order to put in an amino acid into the protein, the growing protein. So this was all known when I, I was a young high school kid and then a student. The DNA structure was determined at that time and also the um, um, allocation of each, each triplet 
with the corresponding amino acid. Proteins were known to exist, and also it was known that the sequence of their components is determining their structure, it means their function. This was all known, but not how. How does hap this happen? It happens in every cell all the time. Some, some cells have the machine that translates the genetic code into proteins, which is called ribosomes. Some have millions of them in a single cell, in the liver, million of ribosomes. And these ribosomes are no, uh, sorry, no to read the, the code, the genetic code, and to produce accordingly proteins. They, they read a language of four letters. They are creative in a world of 20 letters. They work all the time. They hardly make mistake. Mistake of about one to a million, one to half a million, there is some dispute about it. And this, these are actually the machines of life. And it was not known how they work. I want to give you an example. Ribosomes can make about 40 bonds between the components of the protein in one second, with very, very little mistake. I was the fastest in my class at the university. Second year, we had to make a single bond. I was the fastest because I was very, very poor, and I had many jobs that I had to do, so I had to finish with my, my lab work as fast as possible to do all the other jobs. And as the fastest, I needed six hours to make one bond. Now, chemistry uh, developed, and it's possible to make a bond in two hours, but not 40 in a second, like the ribosomes make all the time. Uh, why do the ribosomes make all the time? Let me just say one word. Cells, life, don't like long, long-lasting proteins. They are afraid of mistakes. Life is afraid of mistakes. So proteins are being killed, killed or denatured or get deteriorated, and new ones have to come in. And the working blocks for the proteins, the components are, of course, coming from the proteins that we eat, like eggs and, and uh, cheese and steaks and so on. So this is what the cell is doing all the time. The cells are doing all the time everywhere in every living organisms, including bacteria, and it was not known how. And for me, this was a very exciting question. I was really curious about it. I really wanted to understand it. I was not the only one. There were several other groups led by more distinguished scientists with much more experience that, uh, than a new, a, a new fresh uh, scientist like I was at that time, and they failed. Some of them have been and still are very distinguished. So I thought, if I also fail, I join a good group of failures. <laughs> but my curiosity was stronger than me, and we continued. Uh, I, I don't think that I want to go now on to all the problems and all the questions and all this. But after 20 years, we got the structures and we understand the, the function. And I think that the take home lesson for you new graduates, curiosity is, is the driving force. Don't give up if something excites you and if you are curious about something. Of course, if it's something of, of meaning in life, in nature, in space, in whatever you are interested. So this is one thing I wanted to stress, curiosity and passion. You know, when I was young, I didn't even know that there is a profession called scientist. As I told you, we were very poor. My parents had no scientific or any similar education. And I, I thought that how come somebody will pay for somebody else that works on it? 
her or his hobby. I looked at answering questions that I was curious about as a hobby. And I didn't think that hobby can be paid for. I, I changed my mind when I was already a student and uh, I was in, at the university and saw that there are labs and so on, so uh, this is the way I went into science. But still, curiosity was and still is my driving force. Now my driving force uh, led, leads me in two, two uh, ideas, two paths that were al already mentioned a minute ago. One is the origin of life, I think, we think, that we discovered within the ribosome the, a pocket that is where life started in the prebiotic time. This is one thing we are trying to to uh, prove it, and a few months ago, we got the first proof. And the second is not only to understand how antibiotics work, but also how resistance to antibiotic, antibiotics is acquired, and what can one do in order to fight against it. So may, let me say a few words about that. Antibiotics that are being used today all, almost all, not all, but almost all antibiotics are natural products which are the weapons that one bacteria type is using against enemies, other bacteria. And the doctors uh, are using it when the antibiotics are such that they don't disturb the patient. We don't want to kill the patient, but they can kill the, the bacteria, the bad bacteria, the pathogens. Because ribosomes are so important, as you heard a minute ago, they produce all the cell workers. They are a very, very uh, beloved target to the antibiotics. Almost half of the useful antibiotics are paralyzing ribosomes. No new proteins, no new life for the next generation. But bacteria are clever. In many aspects are cleverer than us at least in survival. So the bacteria found ways to resist the weapons that other bacteria produced against them. All ribosomal antibiotics that are known today are paralyzing the ribosome by stopping one of their functions. It's not, not needed to stop all functions, just inhibiting one of their functions like the read, reading of the, of the code or producing the bond and so on. It's enough that one of these functions is, is uh, done and the ribosome cannot function and next generation will not have proteins or will have wrong proteins and so on. Uh, bacteria found it out, bacteria make it, made it. And all uh, uh, experiments done of all all trials done by, by companies could not overcome that. Therefore, companies are not, are not making new antibiotics now. They are not investigating in it. It's much too expensive. There is very little hope that there will not be resistance. And the, the products are not going to be... A, um, are not going to justify the high investment in the production, in, in, the, in, in the finding how to make new ones. And this is a, 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 a real bad situation. The World Health Association announced that they think that in 2020, uh, there will, we will start to go back to the time before antibiotics, which is beginning of last century. The World Bank estimated that almost 4% of the global income will be lost because of antibiotic resistance by 2050. It's, it's a frightening situation. And I could not sit quiet to say that actually very little is done against it. Although governments and the European community, the G7 and the United States have uh, acknowledged the problem recently, two or three years ago, and started to 
uh, allocate more money for more funds for research, they cannot convince the companies to, to take off from the research to the production. So we decided in my little lab to look for new ways for uh, producing antibiotics. And uh, therefore we de determined the structures of several ribosomes from uh, bacteria that are pathogenic and we are looking for differences in structures between those and the good bacteria which are not connected to the functional sites but can stop the production of proteins. And so far we've identified a few of them and we are working on it now. So I see that maybe we can still contribute something to humanity, to the health and so on. So before I finish, I want to relate to another question that I'm frequently being asked. What advice can I, can I give to young people, to you guys, you guys, <laughs> uh, in order to whatever, be a good scientist or... My advice, I have only one advice. Don't look for advices. <laughs> do what you think is interesting for you, what you think you can do, what you think will be uh, suitable or helpful to humanity, and what you think has an impact, a real question. Good luck to all of you. Congratulations. And uh, I, I hope to hear about you in the future. Thank you so much. That is excellent advice. <laughs>